Hello TNA and welcome to your last lesson of your energy topic for your GCSE level science. So for today's lesson we're looking at the impact of energy usage. So how energy is used and how that affects the people around it. So for this lesson you do need to have a very good understanding of the different forms of energy and the different sources of energy that we have. So if you missed lesson 10, please go back and do that now first, because if you haven't done lesson 10, this lesson is going to be very difficult. If you are ready for lesson 11, please make sure that you have a clear workspace to do your work, that you have the equipment you need, so your pen, pe pencil, paper, your feedback color pen if you're able to, and that you've put your phone away so it's not distracting you. So without further ado, there's a knowledge check. Please go, go through, write in your answers for your knowledge check. And here are the answers to the do now. Now you'll see they all came from last lesson. So if you did really struggle with this, go back and watch the lesson 10 video because the rest of the lesson will be a lot harder without it. So re or just go over your notes from lesson 10 Re -go, go and re-watch the Lesson 10 video before you continue on with this lesson. So today we're talking about different types of energy resources and how we can actually use those. In a minute, I'm going to ask you to pause this video and go to a website. When you're at that website, the things I want you to look at are the population of the Earth. What is happening to the population and what's happening to the energy resources as we do that. So you'll scroll down and you'll see all kinds of different things being tracked at this website. What thing, what's happening with the energy resources? What's happening with the population? And what's happened, and what's the difference between the fossil fuels or the non-renewable resources and the renewable resources? What differences do you see? All right, so. With that in mind, I would like you to go to this website here, worldometers.info, and it's just the main page there shows you all kinds of different things going on with the world. So pause the video and go to the website now. And welcome back. So hopefully you saw that the world population continues to increase as does energy usage. So we keep growing the population keeps growing as does the energy usage and the resources that we're using. Okay. And also only a small percentage of the world energy is produced from renewable sources. Remind me again, what are renewable resources? I want you to write, make sure that you write in the definition of a renewable resource. So hopefully you have written down a resource. that can be replaced faster than it's used. So we have these renewable resources, but only a small percentage is done from that. Okay, this is because we need reliable energy. Now remind me, what is reliable energy mean? Hopefully you have that reliable energy is that we can count on it. So reliable energy, energy we can count on. Okay. So as we keep reading, this is energy we can guarantee to be available when and where we need it. Because there's no point in only having energy in the summer when we don't need to heat our houses compared to in the winter when we do. So fossil fuels and nuclear fuels are the most reliable energy sources, which is why we still count on them so much, right? We are hoping, and as, as time is going, we're using less and less of the fossil fuels, but it still makes up so much of the energy we produce. So with all that in mind, with everything we learned in the last lesson, there's an activity here for you to do, okay? So... We're looking here at the picture. This is Jewel Island. It is a remote island. What's our definition from remote? You've probably learned this in geography. 
So remote is far away from anything else. So it's not like one of the Scottish islands that can just build a bridge to the mainland or build other things. It's far away from everything else and it's in the Pacific Ocean. So you are leading, imagine, you are leading a team of scientists who live on the environmentally sensitive island. So if an island is environmentally sensitive, what do you need to think about? So you want to take care of the environment. And if it's environmentally sensitive, that means it's easy to destroy and you want to take care of it for two years. You must supply the energy needs of the group, being careful to leave as small of an impact on the island as possible when you leave. So when you leave, it should look the way when it came. So things that you know, the island has sunny days, but cold nights. The wind blows most days, but not in the summer. Hot springs are close to the surface. That means the surface of the land. There is a small coal mine. Okay, so these are the things that you, that you know. Your task is to make a table, like the one I'll show you in a minute, that lists what energy resources can you use and where will you place them to ensure there's renewable energy which has the least environmental impact. I want you to make sure you write that green task down so you can refer back to it. So write down that green task now, thank you. So you will use your notes from lesson 10, or if, if you've lost your notes, if they've gone missing, the dog has had them for supper, you can always Google BBC Bite Size BBC Bite Size Energy Resources. So BBC Bite Size Energy Resources, and they, and they have a really good resource about all of the different kinds of energy resources. So you can use that as well. So with all that in mind, you need to create a table of all of the energy resources. So what can you use? Once you've listed all of the ones you can use, think about where are you going to put it? So why is it suitable? What are the advantages and disadvantages? So fill out this table here for all of the resources that you can use on this island. Once you've done that, I need you to pick out the best one and say why it's the best one. Okay, so pause the video. This should take you a good 10, 15 minutes to, con to finish. So make the table, fill it out, and then choose which one is the best one and why. So we can do one together to help you start, get, start going. If you feel you're okay with it, just pause the video now and crack on. If you're struggling, keep watching and we'll go through one together. So looking at, I'm gonna go back and look at the description. The island has sunny days, but cold nights. So that is one, so sunny days. Think what energy resource needs sunny days? We could use solar energy. So that's the first one. So I'm gonna use that one, write that one down. I'm gonna say solar energy. Why can we use, why can we use solar energy? We have sunny days. Sunny days means it will work. Our advantages is that it do doesn't disturb the environment.
What other advantages are there? Hopefully you remember another advantage is that it doesn't create carbon dioxide. All right, but some disadvantages. What are some disadvantages of solar? Yes, it only works in the daytime. So it'll help, it'll, it won't work to heat up the buildings during those cold nights. So we will need something else as well. It only works in the daytime and on sunny days. So there's one. So I want you to think of the rest. Which ones can we use here? Which ones can we not? And think of the advantages and disadvantages. So with one done solar energy, I'm going to go back and show you the rest of it. I would like you to come up with several more things that we can use on this island. I'd like you to come up with at least five more sources of energy we can use on this island. Hopefully you've come up with these five sources of energy. Now I would like you to complete the other columns of the table. So we have our source of energy. Why is it suitable for this island? And advantages and disadvantages. So pause the video. Make sure that you're writing as much down as you can in this table. So. Here we have the reasons why all of these resources are suitable on this island. So on your own, I need you to write down all of the advantages and all of the disadvantages. Remember going back to lesson 10 if you need to do that, they're all there. So what are the advantages of a coal plant? What are the disadvantages of a coal plant? Advantages of wind, disadvantages of wind, etc., etc. And here are the advantages and disadvantages for using each of these uh, energy resources. Pause the video to copy all of them down now. For your last step, what you need to do is write down in an answer as to which energy resources you think should work for the island. So you need to write which resources and why. So secret here, there is no right or wrong answer. The important part is the why. So this on an exam would be a four to five, even maybe a six mark question. So you really need to flesh out the resources. Not one single resource will work well for this island. So which combination of resources, talking about the pros and cons or the advantages and disadvantages of each. So it should look kind of like a, um, a paragraph or a table comparing. So you do need to compare why and why have you chosen those resources. So once you've done that, make sure you do submit that to your teacher for feedback on that one. And just a couple quick videos to watch about how our energy use is changing as we go through. So as you watch these two videos, which will be linked in the notes below, what I want you to think about is what do we need to worry about for energy going forward? So what concerns so I want you to write this question down. There. About future. 
energy use. So what concerns are there about future energy use? Take notes as you're watching these two videos to help you answer that question. And now that you've watched that, you, s you hopefully have some kind of notes down that we will still be dependent on fossil fuels to provide reliable energy into the future. So depending on what source and as things change, that date does change, but we do know for some time yet, we will be reliant on fossil fuels. But the trend is showing an increase in the use of renewables. So every year we are using more and more renewable energy to help offset those fossil fuels. So renewables offer a solution to climate change that they don't contribute to global warming because they're not releasing that carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. However, there's a lot of different things that factor in there, including cost and other geopolitical reasons, such as elections and local things like that. All right, you will talk more about those in your geography lessons. But in science, you just need to know that we are still dependent on fossil fuels. We're growing to be more renewables. And there's lots of different reasons why that might be. So to finish off the lesson, we have a final knowledge check. Give these questions a go, writing down one and the answer. Giving each question a go to make sure that you do have it down. And here are the final answers for this final knowledge check. Do make sure you have all of your answers written down in your book. So going in now with your feedback color of pen and making sure you do have every correct answer written down so that you know it. Don't forget to send your work through to, to your teacher, whether through email or any other means. And don't forget to do any follow-up tasks that your teacher might have set, including any work on Educake or any other quizzes. Until next time, I'm Miss Brookers.